going on, y'all? Diego here. Todo bien. Francisco, Metal Candy at the gates at the Fonda tonight. Stay tuned for our interview with Martin Larson. What's up, pure rockers? KNEC.com coming at you, Francisco. I'm with Martin Larson, guitarist of At The Gates, legendary Swedish death metal guys. If you guys don't know who this is, go fucking look them up. They are here to celebrate the slaughter of the soul, one of the monumental albums from the 90s. How you doing, my friend? I'm great. Yeah? Thanks. And you guys are just starting the tour out, right? Yes, first, yeah. first show tonight. We are the first show in Los Angeles. Well, first show the US tour. We've, we've done a few in Europe also. Very good, very good. And how was uh, the, the reception in Europe? Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It goes without saying, Europe, I'm just, like, from what I hear, it's just, they eat it up. They, they're just love every minute of it, right? Yeah, well, you're doing the big, the big festivals, right? Yeah, we did uh, Wacken and, and well, well, we didn't often, we've did done off and on in Europe. The, like, because the, the actual, uh, anniversary was two years ago, mm -hmm. so uh, we have bookings that we've never played that kept you know being postponed. Yeah. So we do some of those this year, and some just regular at the gates shows also yeah. kind of in between. So mm -hmm. we've done both this summer. So it's just you're just getting back into the the, the feel of it all now after yeah. like the last couple of years of nothingness. Right. right? Yeah, yeah. Well, how. Did you have like any first show jitters, like any nervousness, or how did it feel coming back? Oh, well, not really. But for me personally, because I uh, like a free thing, I, ha I had to do the solos myself, yeah. which is um, totally uncommon ground for me. So uh, I, I had to do the first, you know, lead show at Wacken in front oh, of like wow. maybe I don't know fifty thousand people or so. Ooh. So for the first time in decades, I was a little bit nervous. Oh, nice. <laughs> but I think nervousness is good. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, it's a challenge, and, and it's a le learning. Oh, we can't even talk. Lear learning thing. I, you, sure. know, uh, you you grow from experiences right. like that. Uh, but it was kind of shaky at, at first. Does this give you a new perspective, like maybe to look forward to like the new writing process for some new music? Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. Is that is that on the menu yet? Like, have you guys? Oh, uh, with dabble with. We have like a, a sketches for two, between two and four, two and four songs, and uh, but that's been kind of put uh, on on pause for for a while now. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're looking to finish touring this year and then uh, focus on writing the next year uh, and do like spare uh, just odd, odd shows in between writing next year. Right, right. And uh, is this uh, how long is the tour going for? Uh, this one is just for two weeks. Sadly, we we'd love to do more, but sure. we, you know, some guys have, have jobs and families and all that, so it's hard to find a time where everyone can, everyone can do it simultaneously. Yeah. And uh, so, sadly, it's only a two week tour. I know we miss a lot of areas in, in the U.S. and Canada. Yeah. Uh, and Mexico for that. Uh, so um, it's just two weeks in U.S. and then we we do a. Like a regular at the gate store, not a an, an anniversary tour, uh, supporting in flames in, oh, in right. Europe in uh, another Swedish death metal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in in, in uh, November, December. Oh, nice. So after that, we're gonna start focusing on new material, probably. Awesome. awesome. And how has been the reception with like ever since you guys broke out of the hiatus and you guys came back with like At War with Reality and uh, the last few records? How does it feel to like just be back and? in front of the fans and giving them new music well this is uh, this is us this is what we do it feels totally natural and, and uh, I can't can't believe we it took us so long to realize just playing old stuff for many years before we started looking at doing new stuff I mm -hmm. think it was uh, because we, we we said that we wouldn't uh, at first and that kind of became a like a millstone around the neck for for, for a bit yeah. um, so it took us longer to 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 realize that, that that's what we actually wanted to do. Yeah. Um, but uh, this is from like when you guys came and decided to come back. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it was just because it was just going to be for shows, right? It, well, the the first uh, when we started uh, when, when we played in twenty oh eight, that was supposed to be like a closure thing. Oh. Because we we uh, we ended so abruptly in the nineties, and we wanted to. Finally, do a, like a proper farewell tour, the one we didn't do in in '96. Yeah. Uh, so that was designed as a like like a farewell. Yeah. Uh, but then you know, we <laughs> the fans. From what I hear, the fans' response was just overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then then 
that stayed true for a couple of years, and then mm -hmm. in, in 2011 we we started playing again, and then it's been you know it, it came naturally like a organic process, the the, the urge to do new material, and yeah. eventually in, in 2014 the the dam broke, <laughs> <laughs> and then all the flood of ideas came out. Right? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all through all that time, because we're talking about nearly 10 years, right? Yeah. Between since slaughter, slaughter, like. Yeah, even, well, you even more. Yeah, 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 but slightly more. I think almost twelve years, possibly. I think uh, ninety-five and no. fourteen. No, so that's nineteen, 19 years. Oh, yeah, between albums. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Like that. that's yeah, a long a time. Decades, it's a long time. Yeah. Um, were you kind of maybe in the back of your mind writing material? I mean, I you think know, so. I'm, I'm not a pro prolific writer in, in this band, but but uh, I'm sure it's been you know. There's always ideas, sure, and uh, it, it, I'm sure it builds up, and eventually there there will be a, a release. Yeah, if that's what you're you're asking. Well, yeah, the the whole time that you had like stepped away from you know at the gates and everybody like just you guys took a break, or maybe eventually you called it quits. I don't know what mm -hmm. your mentality was at the time, but I mean you must have. I mean, what was your thought process? What were you going through? What was you, what were you thinking after slaughter and? All of a sudden, at the gates was no more. Uh, it was just uh, some kind of exhaustion for some of the members. Yeah. I was happily, you know, I, I had happily up continued myself personally, yeah. but uh, it became such a huge thing. Thing that because it was like the ketchup effect. Nothing happened for a few years, and then everything happened at once. Uh, once we recorded and released Slaughter, yeah. we had a like a. 150 200 shows in a year whereas we had maybe 20 a year at most before that yeah so we couldn't really handle that as a band uh, and uh, it was overwhelming it was like yeah it was the that, that's the word it was overwhelming for, yeah. for some of the guys yeah. and uh, but then we all continued playing music and we we remained friends also so uh, eventually the timing was just right in a way to to get together again yeah and that's uh, you uh, had established a relationship with was a Century Media, right? Uh, was it? Yeah, with, uh, for the uh, first um, new album mm -hmm. in fourteen. Yeah, yeah. And also uh, the guys in the Haunted, which is like a brother band to us, right. with, uh, we share members, and uh, both old and new. So uh, they they were on Century Media for quite a while before we started doing new music without the gates. So it, it was kind of a natural thing to. To to uh, to join them to join Century Media. Very good, very good. Now back with Slaughter of the Soul. Like, uh, were you guys surprised at the reaction that that album gained? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's not something you think of no. yourself. It's it's hard to. Uh, I mean, it's still weird to me. Um, I'm just very happy to be here because uh, I I know a lot of my own favorite band. I mean, if if you stop playing music then what usually happens is you kind of fade away into some kind of uh, cult band status and uh, you have a, like a tiny but really dedicated um, uh, crowd of fans yeah uh, but for some reason the underground feel I guess right yeah yeah but it's for like some reason that, that, that the, the complete opposite happened to us oh. um, I mean sure yeah we're a good band definitely but there are so many good bands that this doesn't happen to that are equally good right. as we are. So we're just lucky. And I think we, we did two tours in, in the US in 96. Mm -hmm. One first supporting Morbid Angel and then second supporting Nicole Death. And yeah. both those tours we reached out to a lot of people in, here in, in Northern America. And uh, I think people talk about Velvet Underground, their kind of influence mm -hmm. that everyone not a lot of people saw the shows, but everyone who did started a band of, the, of their own. And uh, in a smaller scale, it seems like that's kind of what happened to us as well. Uh, so uh, I suppose that got the ball rolling, you know, in, in a way. So uh, we had a lot of influence and people who grew to be much bigger than we ever were or are now yeah. just dropped our name in all kinds of uh, circumstances or new situations. So that made people interested in us. So we, when we started playing again in 08, uh, it was on a much bigger scale than where we ended in 96. And that shouldn't happen. I'm just really happy that it did. Do you think it was 
part of like the, the Swedish death metal uh, style that was breaking through at the time that caught people's attention. I mean, possibly, yeah. Because yeah. 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 uh, that, I mean, you have Florida death metal, you have New York death metal, right. and you definitely have you know Swedish death metal, and you guys are like the veterans of that uh, style. Right. How would you describe for someone who doesn't know what Swedish death metal is? I mean, we can name bands, but how would you describe it compared to like all the other metal scene? Uh, I think we're kind of a, we're not the the typical Swedish death metal band at the gates. There there are a few bands in Gothenburg that are kind of similar, but not really. Uh, they're even more melodic than we are. We still have the kind of like a, a touch of punk intensity yeah. and. Uh, we're not as clean and you know tidy as some, some of the bands. Not, not that there's anything wrong with that. You know, you're just, yeah. just trying to pick like the differences. Yeah. Um, it's a bit of a branch of like it breaks off from like you know the thrash fast into like the melodic stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and, and compared to a lot of the Stockholm bands, they they're completely different to at the gates. But for me personally, my taste is more towards the Stockholm type of the model than the Gothenburg type. But that's just a, just a personal preference. Uh, like a uh, dismember, like a yeah, dismember in tune. Great, tuned, yeah. great yeah. listening from Stockholm originally, but they kind of in that scene. But yeah. but that's that heavy, like, like guitar crunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, as for Slaughter of the Soul, which is uh, that was like a one. That's a, that's a, like a thin slice of what we are about. Yeah. That's just a that's just a, a, a part of at the gates, but. Um, it was, uh, th that's what, where we were at at that time. And uh, we came out of a, a really bad period. We had a lousy tours and and uh, all kinds of things. So we were in a very low, like mental uh, position. Uh, so I think we, we felt that um, we have a chance to, because uh, all of a sudden we, we had a foot in the door in, in, uh, at Eric, the, the label Eric. So, so we knew we could make at least one album at Eric, and we wanted to make that fucking good because that might be our last chance to do anything. So we wanted to um, like make a record that meant something the way the records we grew up with meant to, to, uh, something to us. We yeah. wanted to make uh, like uh, an album like that for, for other people. And uh, so we aimed to make like a classic metal album. When we grew up on like, Priest, except yes, of course, fate, whatever you know. Yeah. Uh, but also, whilst we were growing up, we, um, metal became more extreme. Yeah. You had all the you know Slayer, Dark Angels, or whatever, sure, and sure. then eventually death metal and all that. So that was the filter for us, trying to make a classic metal album. That so th that's how Slaughter of Soul came out the way it did. It's our version of a classic metal album yeah. through, through the extreme metal filter, so uh, that's probably how it probably why it sounds like it does. Yeah, I think definitely Slaughter is one of those like must listen albums, and that's why we're here. Slaughter of the Soul anniversary. They're gonna play the album in length, and we're here with Martin Larson, guitarist for At the Gates. Uh, going back, you mentioned your U.S. tour. And it's, I guess subconsciously in the oh, back yeah. of my mind, that's why I wore the shirt. I didn't oh, realize yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But I was at that show. It was, uh, I think it was in Corona. I forgot where. Outside oh, of yeah, LA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we fucked up badly on that show. <laughs> <laughs> well, you did. But it was I a good show it. still. Yeah. yeah, it was At the Gates, Morbid Angel, Dissection, and I think there was a local band called Gangrena, and maybe another band. I don't remember. Okay. Yeah, but yeah, I still have that ticket stuff. Cool. And I wish I had bought it. I think like, it was totally like, uh, right. yeah. I think metal as a whole was transforming in like the early 90s yes and you guys were a big part of that give me your perspective on the decades from the 90s to the 2000s and to like now oh for me personally uh i kind of got out of metal or like the metal scene new metal in the late 90s because mm -hmm. it became so tidy and surgical and boring and clean uh like the the, the not the mainstream metal, but 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 you know the the established underground scene. Mm -hmm. So it became more. I looked into punk more for for excitement, uh, but cool. more hardcore records and stuff. Yeah. And then um, within a few years, it kind of bounced back the underground scene, 
uh, people started looking to older influences yeah. you know more my type of music taste yeah. uh, more like harsh um, genuine dirty metal yeah and uh, I kind of missed out on that at the beginning so I'm, I'm still backpedaling backtracking yeah figuring out and finding like bands from the 2001 and, well that's kind of I always kept stuff. my eye on the 80s and yeah. whatever so during those you know Dark years for me in in the metal in metal, mm -hmm. I I kept finding out old bands, but I wasn't interested in new bands. Mm -hmm. uh, th that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm finding out now for mm -hmm. the last like ten years or so, possibly even more. I'm I'm finding bands from the dark years yeah. that were good, but I couldn't find them then because they drowned in all the you know to me crap music. Yeah. Um, so I'm not sure if I if that's answered to your question. Well, I mean the the, the change in scenery as far as like how metal is uh, evolving. Let's skip new metal because arguably new metal kind of ruined music, but at the same time save metal. But we're not gonna have that argument. We're talking about like death metal here. Yeah. So and also I want to point point out that this is just personal taste. Sure, sure. I don't care what you know. Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, you know, you know, we can speak freely. You know, yeah. like everybody has their opinion. Everybody likes whatever they like, but you know. Uh, yeah. Personally speaking, personally for me, like I'm into the extreme stuff, you right, know, yeah. and like death metal, black metal, um, thrash metal, and I think it's important what you're pointing out to like go back and just find new bands, right? You know, don't get stuck too much on what's the mainstream or what's kind of like current. Mm. There's which there is a lot of great stuff. Yeah, this is also a lot of crap, but I think when you go back and just look for bands, mm. you have that like, oh man. Right, like it's like a surprise factor. Like yeah, 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 yeah. So, and like right now, the scene is super healthy, and there's so much good stuff out there. It's just that there's a billion bands, yeah. so it's it's harder to find the good stuff because right. you have totally. to sift through stuff that you don't care for right. to find the you know the, the the gems. Totally. Yeah, like you know, you have a lot of like the mainstream outlets that like promote these bands over and over mm -hmm. again. But and personally, like you know, with along with Kane AC and just my personal interest is like I I enjoy seeking out those bands from like Russia, Australia, Sweden, yeah, yeah. you know, China, all this stuff. And you just you're like you're blown away, you know. And so let's name drop a couple of bands. What bands stand out in your mind right now? Um, well, as for metal, I um, I haven't really found anything in the like the very last few years. But but I, I like Portal bands like that. Really Portal. like Australia like, or New Zealand? Uh, Australia. Yeah. 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 Stark and uh, uh, like hyper intense band. Like there's there's a band from Canada called uh, Adversarial. Adversarial. Yeah, yeah, which is super fast and really the, the the production is perfect. It's just you know dirty enough. Okay. Uh, Check them out. Bands like that. Yeah. So. Very cool. Very cool. And uh, so we're again here for Slaughter of the Soul. They're gonna play the album in the entirety here at the Los Angeles stop of their tour at the Henry Fonda Theater in Hollywood, California. How does it feel to be back in Hollywood doing this? Like, uh, you have much experience here? Uh, well, honestly, I, I feel so privileged that I even get to be here. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> whenever I feel, you know, down or if, you know, when, when, when every day slips into touring, uh, I, I was a postman for eight years. Oh. So that's my perspective. Whenever I, if I have a lobby call at 3.30 in the morning and I've slept for 45 minutes or, or so, uh, I still know that I'm privileged that I get to do this at all because, you know, I could be a postman still. Uh, <laughs> yeah. A good buddy of mine's a postman too, shout out to Jimmy. Um, but well, he, he used to be a really good job in Sweden, Sweden yeah. but not anymore. It's Ooh. so, so, That's so sad. stressful and, I'm sure. But, yeah. I mean, like it's just piles and piles of like mail I'm sure it's just like never ending mm. <laughs> okay um, we uh, before we started we started talking about the new guitarist that's uh, filling in for you right um, yeah. for, at the gates um, tell us about him what's his name uh, it, his name is Daniel Martinez he, he usually plays with uh, atheist and uh, we'll continue to do that we, we're just borrowing him right. for, for this tour mm -hmm. and he's a lifesaver and and uh, he really knows. Th I mean, this is the first time since recording uh, "Slaughter the Soul" that the cold solo sounds like it's supposed to do. Oh yeah. Uh, so th the guy can can play for sure. Awesome. Yeah. And you said you had to um, kind of uh, take the lead as far as guitars. 
Oh yeah, I, I had to for, for a few shows. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not comfortable doing that, but it had to be done. And uh, I, I think I faked most of it, <laughs> but I fucked up too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, it, it was all right. It was a, it was a learning experience. I, I in some way I think I grew out of it, mm -hmm. grew because of it. Uh, but I'm I'm really relieved to have a proper lead play, player again. Yeah. Well, we're stoked to check it out, and we're stoked to be here in Los Angeles with Martin Larson of At The Gates and uh, Slaughter of the Soul uh, for the fans that are here to just witness this historical moment. Uh, do you have a message for the people out there? Uh, no, just thank you for just giving a shit and, and still <laughs> caring about us. We're, we're very privi privileged that you do, so thank you. Very cool, very cool. And uh, give a horns and a fist bump to the rest of the band camp yeah. over at, uh, at the gates. And uh, Municipal Waste is also supporting. And this is going to be a phenomenal show. Uh, you probably, by the time you see this, if you miss the show, you miss the show. You, 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 you know, you, it's your bad. But always make it a point to catch some of your favorite bands because you never know. These guys went on hiatus for nearly 20 years. You going to wait around another 20 years? I don't think so, man. Go do it. Go catch them. At the gates, Martin Larson. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. And you guys break a leg out there, as we say. Oh, yeah. Thanks. And uh, this is Francisco, a.k.a. Metal Candy, knc.com. Thanks to Diego. And uh, thanks to Corinne for setting this up. Cheers. The horn's up. <laughs> <laughs>